is so today I'm making a video and this is gonna be a different kind of video because it's more so a kind of advice video slash a more story time ish video which I've never really done but I wanted to do this for a long time because I was like um I don't know I just see the need for this and I think now's the time to tell it so this will be this story about the time that I was homeless when I was 17 I'm 19 now so this was just a weird little kind of blip in life and basically just things that I wish I knew things um, that I would have done differently and like preventative measures that I would have taken had I known about them at the time but it's like when you get into that kind of situation you don't even know um, anything about anything so yeah so anyways <laughs> I guess I'll just start off about how the whole situation happened. So it wasn't any kind of crazy situation, but like really it was just like a whole bunch of unfortunate circumstances on top of unfortunate circumstances. Like for a long time, well we didn't have any money basically, my whole family had no money. So basically there was no money coming in from anywhere and where we lived there was really nowhere to get like a job and the only job that my mom could get was really really far away. So she had to go like basically over the hills and through the mountains. This is like a two and three hour bus ride to somewhere way in the mountains, then way all the way back down. So that's eight hour bus ride back and forth each way. that she had to take and it was just taking an entire strain on not only her mental and physical health but it was just deteriorating and deteriorating and deteriorating and then she couldn't find um anything closer or anything better and it's like for all this time we were living literally this close to the edge with no money and that's not her fault it's just like the situation again i'll get into things that i could have done and things I wish I did but I didn't know at the time but so yeah so basically for a long time we just had no money we were basically on struggle street trying to figure things out blah 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 so then we go down the line blah 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 and basically eventually what ended up happening was that my dad ended up dying and it just kind of sent things even more spirally and I feel like that kind of took a big toll on like my mom's mental health and everything and it kind of just, you know? And it's like, the situation we were in, I don't think should have ever had to happen, but it did and it's like, oh well. But what can you do really, you know? And it's like, there's a lot of stuff that could have prevented it. like. Or should have prevented it but it doesn't because you realize <laughs> well you don't realize but I already knew this but basically nobody cares about you the government doesn't care about you because like both of my parents are military veterans blah 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 so they should have had all the whatever resources in the world right but no because the people that work there they don't really care really about people because my mom would go down there all the time. She would try to get help. They would be like, well, if you really wanted help, you should have did this and this and this and this and this. Knowing good and well, she didn't have a car. She didn't have a job. She didn't have any money. How was she going to do all this stuff? She scraped together her last $2 to get down there just for them to go like, oh, well, actually, we can't help you because according to the encyclopedia. <laughs> so, yeah. So eventually all this crazy stuff ended up happening, blah, 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 blah. And we'll just say basically one day like my mom's mental health just went all the way all the way over there and she ended up having to go to the hospital and all this stuff happened and basically me and my sister were ending up we were alone and we didn't have anywhere to go and our mom was no longer gonna be able to be with us anymore so we this would start out with my sister but then I would end up being by myself for I think about eight months so yeah so basically when that happened 
obviously I was sad. Um, I didn't know what to do. I was like, what is this? Why is this? How is this? Because not that we had been this kind of homeless before, but we had been like without before, but our mom was with us. We were always all together. But this would be the first time ever that me and my sister were alone and then that I would be alone. So anyways, we went with these people. They were like crisis, whatever. And they put us in this hotel for the night and they were like, you're gonna have to figure out what you wanna do come morning time. So the next day me and my sister went to this homeless shelter. It was like in the middle of nowhere. And <clears throat> basically they have like one option because I was underage and my sister, she wasn't underage, but I was underage and they didn't wanna separate us. So they were like, um, do you have family in another state? Because basically their first option is we'll send you to somewhere else. And most of the time what ended up happening and what actually ended up happening to us was that they would send the people to another state, whatever would happen with their family in that state, and then they would just come right back and end up back in the shelter because their family just, people ended up coming right back. So basically we ended up going to another state. Then we came all the way back here and I was like, okay, since that didn't work, whatever they did didn't work, let me figure out what we can do. And this is one of my first tips. So what I would recommend is if you can get all of your stuff and put it in storage, like if you can, make sure you pay for at least three months of storage. If you have, like, if you are gonna be completely, completely homeless, just put all your stuff in storage. And that way you won't have to worry about where all your stuff is, what you're gonna do with it, blah, 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 things like that. That's what I would recommend. So basically, after we came back from the other state, just a whole bunch of stuff went on, whatever, me and my sister had to find somewhere to go. So we called what is called Safe Place. Now, I know they have these all across America. I'm pretty sure they have them in Canada, but I don't know 1000%. So, but anyways, basically it's a place if you're, um, I think 12 to 17, you're supposed to call them and they can come help you from a library, a bus stop, blah, 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 any other place. So basically we had been calling them all day and we did actually see our mom that day, which was really good. And we hadn't seen her in like, what was it? Maybe two months, a month and a half. Um, so we saw her at the airport and that was nice. And yeah, even though I was really sad, but it's not her fault. I was just sad because of the situation. So anywho's, we ended up calling safe place, blah, 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 blah. My sister was 19, I was 17, so they were like, we can't take, we, keep, we can't do anything with your sister because she, if she was 18, then we could do something. And I'm like, she just turned 18, 19 basically yesterday, like her birthday was the day before. And they were like, well, whoop de doo sucks for you. So I was sad, I was crying. They were like, legally, we have to take you because you're 17, blah, 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 blah. So off I went. And this would be the start of the situation of me living by myself so the first night I went to this um it was a group home and I was like what is this place why is this place and my <laughs> my attitude was different because I was different to most of the kids in the fact that I had never done any drugs I didn't do anything violent I wasn't in like juvenile prison my parents weren't in jail my parents weren't on drugs it was just different like these kids were like I don't want to call them criminals but like these kids are just on a whole nother level and I'm like why are you like this like my whole time I was there I could not even there's something wrong with these kids on a serial level like they were serial abusers and they're like 12 13 14 like even some of the girls there i was like you're 13 14 why are you acting like that and then she didn't even know the girl couldn't even respond she didn't know why she was acting like that and i was like you don't have to be so violent at 12 and 13 years old because like what was the reason 
So anyways, eventually they ended up moving me out of that group home and into this program, which was for, I guess, 16 to 21 year olds. And basically it's supposed to be, you live in your own apartment. They help you do all this stuff, which is a lie because they did not help us do anything. Everything that happened after I moved to that apartment, I had to do for myself because the people there, absolute trash. The program is absolute trash and that's the one thing I want to tell you. The government is absolute trash and they don't care about you. But you should already know that if you live in America. So this is where I'm going to start into my advice section. Now, I when I was a little kid, and then again when I was 17, I was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder slash ADHD, and this can create its own little host of challenges, and for me it mainly manifests in like my mind going over there when it needs to be here and getting overwhelmed easily, <clears throat> and not really being able to deal with like critically... Um, sensory overload situations and I'm very spatially unaware and I don't do good with directions and things like that so basically I could be standing facing this wall and you turn me around and I don't know where I am anymore and that's like really scary and overwhelming for me and I hated the fact that at every single one of these places what the people would do is they would be like if you want help go to this place they would just print out they printed out physical google directions told me to take whatever bus like these were car directions and I was on the bus so it's like what so they were no help at all but basically what ended up happening is I was like I can't be living like this so I ended up getting a job which was really really good saved up some money and I was able to basically make that time work best for me and it didn't turn out to be that bad so what I can say is it really was not that bad for me but the program and the way they treat people and the way they help people help they could do way better <clears throat> but all of that's a story for another day so right now let me get into the advice section so the first thing I want to say is if you are experiencing um, homelessness or you think you're about to be homeless or you're just in a situation I would recommend if you are I think you can be 15 in some states but 16 please 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 try to get a job at your local grocery store because they pay weekly they hire fast and you can get a job as a courtesy clerk or as a cashier and you can get money really really fast and I would just recommend you save that money so that in case you do become homeless you can like I said put your stuff in a storage unit and have a little bit of money because if you have a little bit of money saved you can buy bus passes you can buy um, like little gift visa cards so that you can get a lift in case you don't have a bank account and that's a good thing about grocery stores too you don't need a bank account because you can cash your check there I don't think you need your um, because I know some people don't have all their documents that they need, but you should just, if you have your social security card and, but I think you can work there without it. You don't need a social security and a, um ID card if you're um, under 18, I don't think. I think they'll hire you without it. And that's a job I would recommend the grocery store because it's a quick job, easy job. And that way you have at least a little bit of money to fall back on. Plus the grocery store has a lot of resources for people and they do have emergency assistance for homeless employees. And that's one thing I would have known because had I known that at the time when we were experiencing and going into before we were homeless, I would have gotten a job at the grocery store and I would have told my sister to get a job with me at the grocery store because there was one close to us, but I didn't know like that. Like that's how my mind works. I don't think of stuff until it's all the way 10,000 years later. Because like I had had a job at Jack in the Box but then I left that job and I wasn't logically thinking like oh you can go get another job I was like oh well so yeah so that was one thing <clears throat> so anyways for the most part um basic necessities will be provided like 
stuff to wash up with, um, food, not the best food, but whatever. Um, if you are a child and you go to one of the children's homeless shelters, they try to be a little bit better, but they're not really. But if you're older, like 21, then you might end up having to go to an actual shelter. And if you do, I would just say, um, try to spend a lot of time at the library. Try to, um, gather as much resources for yourself as you can and try to get into one of the programs where they give you like a kind of apartment it's like not a real apartment because they help you to eventually find a real apartment but at least that way you won't be at the shelter with 5,000 other people on top of you and then you have a chance to think the reason i say that is because this video i made at the library when i was at the homeless shelter and a lot of libraries have these private boxes that you can go in and do stuff there so you're not interrupted and you can kind of rent a room day by day you can be in there for a good few hours by yourself so that's why i would say spend some time at the library and see what kind of resources you can get from there i don't know why i said rent in that last clip because actually it's free you just go on the computer and you request or reserve a room so yeah this is just another random clip, but it's one of the reasons I want to say that it wasn't that bad because here I was at the dentist watching La Patrona, which has one of my favorite actors who is Gonzalo Garcia Vivanco, and it wasn't that bad, so the dentist was really nice, and even though my skin is tragic in this clip, it doesn't really matter, so I got to watch my show, and I was just enjoying the um, nitrous numbing drugs, so yeah. You know, and the good thing for me is that I was in online school, so I could kind of, despite all of this, I could go to school. And the thing is good that the school had a thing called a McKinney Vento program, which helps homeless children or children experiencing homelessness, students, things like that. And they had this place called a 1 in 10 center, which was a kind of resource place for um, at-risk youth slash lettuce baking guacamole tomato you quinoa so um if you're any in any of those groups like the little lgbt groups or if you're in experiencing homelessness or anything like that they have they had resources for that and i don't know if this is in every state but i would try to look into that see what kind of resources they have because when you um become homeless you really do have to look into the subsets and groups and see which categories you fall into. And if you fall into any special um, categories, I would say try to get the help from those um, as much as you can. Like I said, if you have a disability, try to see what they can do for homeless youth with disabilities. If you fall into any gender identity or anything like that, try to see what they can do for that. If you're a girl, try to find girls resources. If you um, orphan something like that, try to find those types of resources. Because again, veterans, military, blah, 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 resources. The main thing that I got out of that was when I went places and I was like, oh, my parents are veterans, they would be like, okay, because your parents are veterans, you can do this, but they didn't really help all that much you know so yeah and sorry this video is all over the place because my brain doesn't work properly and I can't organize but yeah so another thing is I would say try if you can um, like I said if you save your money from your job try to get a bank account if you can't that's fine because you won't need really a credit card or a debit card for anything but in case you want to make online purchases um, or if you want to take something like a lift in case there's a time when you can't take a bus because sometimes you're just in a situation where you're like I'm so done with this I don't want to take the bus today and I can't be bothered because like if somebody had helped me I wish somebody would have helped me because one day I was trying to find um, the Department of Economic Security and I went walking around in 115 degree heat for four and five hours trying to find this place only for them to keep redirecting me in a circle telling me well I don't know where it is 
and the only time I stumbled upon this school for at-risk teenagers and this lady was like are you okay blah 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 and I was like not really no so yeah if I had had these resources it could have prevented that for me so I would recommend like I said getting the job at the grocery store and once you do that save up your money as much as you can and I would say put it in a bank account because people are shady and if you go to one of the places where they give you a kind of apartment you might get a roommate and they might try to take your money so if you do end up getting your money try to I would say put it in the locker at your job and lock it or get a um, small bag and lock that and keep it next to you at all times and like I said I would recommend getting the visa gift card so you can take a lift if you need to or if you need to buy something where they don't take cash if you need to because right now is extreme circumstances and luckily at the time that I was in this hadn't started yet even though I think it was close to starting because when I came back to the state for the first time because we came back over whatever and they were like have you traveled outside of America and they did ask specifically at the doctor if I had gone to China in the last 30 days and I was like no <clears throat> and it didn't make sense to me and I was like what does that even have to do with anything it was just oddly specific for me and now they're saying all this stuff which is weird but I don't know so yeah so um yeah so basically my five main things are just try to help yourself as much as you can obviously if you have more because people not that they'll mess you up on purpose but these places don't help as much as they can like they'll take you to a job fair and leave you there but they won't give you the resources on what to do at the job fair how to get um how to actually get a job which is why i say i would recommend the grocery store job because actually after I got to the shelter um, or the homeless, the group home, the apartment, whatever, I got a job at Nordstrom and the thing is I had had work experience before so I got that job but if you have not had work experience I don't think you know you would be able to get a um, job like that that fast and if you're not used to working in some high whatever retail experience then you're not really gonna do good at the job in advance as fast as you should be able to so that's why I say a grocery store because it's a good first job it's easy to learn plus they have subsets like some grocery stores have a Starbucks some have like a pizza place so there's many different departments you can get experience in and like I said really young age you can get help so that's why I would recommend that and like I said the storage unit and if you have um, autism or ADHD or any type of neurodivergent um, thing, neurodivergent handicap, I would recommend that you try to find resources for that, like I said. And I don't know if they have one in 10 centers in other states, but I would recommend those because they have a lot of good stuff in there. So yeah, and I'll basically just leave all my rest of my descriptions and things, resources and things in the description because I'm not really good at saying things as good as I am at talking about them so yeah so I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video